This is Algebra 2, Chapter 2, Section 6, in which we will study a variety of special functions. The first of our special functions is what we call a piecewise defined function. A lot of times you'll just hear me call it a piecewise function. <clears throat> but the idea is, instead of just having one function all the way across the domain, you have multiple functions, each of which have their own part of the domain to work on. And you can always tell when you're looking at a piecewise function because it's written in separate lines and it has if x is less than something and if x is greater than something with an equal to thrown in there somewhere. That's when you know you have a piecewise function. So let's try to graph this first piecewise function, f of x, is equal to the set of these things. It's equal to x minus 2 if x is less than 1. Uh, less than negative 1, sorry. And it's equal to x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Well, let's work off the first line, x minus 2. I need to have some values that are less than negative 1. So I'm going to pick negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So I'm going to put a point at negative 2, negative 4. Now I'm also curious what happens if we pretend x is equal to negative 1 here. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Now, x doesn't actually equal negative 1, so I have to use an open circle to show that point. So I've got that point at negative 1, negative 3. Now I'm ready to graph a line through there. So I've got my line through that section. Now I'm ready to move to the second section where x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So first what happens at x equals negative 1? Negative 1 plus 3 is 2 so at negative 1 I get y equals 2, negative 1, 2. And if x is any other number greater than negative 1 I'm going to pick x equals 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. So that point goes at 0, 3. And now I can graph the line that's through there. We need to identify the domain and the range. The domain is going to be all real numbers unless there's a skip involved. We go over to x equals negative 1, then we go from 1 the rest of the way, negative 1 the rest of the way, so we don't skip anything. So the domain is all real numbers. The range doesn't include numbers between negative 3 and 2. So we have to show that the range is everything less than negative 3 or greater than or equal to 2. This one is strictly less than because x doesn't equal, or y doesn't equal uh, negative 3 here. So it's strictly less than. Another thing they're going to ask us to do is write a function for the graph. Well, we've got three sections of lines that we have to write functions for. Okay. I'm going to take them one at a time. I have this section of line here that I need to write an equation for. Well, just like we did previously on uh, the last video, we found the equation of the line by doing a slope. So I picked two points that are on the line, negative 1, negative 3, 
negative 2, negative 6, and I found the slope and find that slope to be 3. Use point slope form to generate the equation y equals 3x. When is this true? Only when x is less than negative 1. So I'm going to say the, the function equals this group of things. 3x is the first one if x is less than negative 1. Now I'm ready to go to the second piece. So I'm going to pick two points that are on it again and find the slope. And since the slope is negative 1 and I have the intercept of 0, I'm just going to go straight to the equation y equals negative x. Technically it's y equals negative x plus 0, but adding 0 is kind of boring. Now where was that true? That was true from x equals negative 1 over to x equals 3. That's the only place that applied, so I have to say that, that it only applies from negative 1 to 3. Including negative 1, not including 3, because 3 is open. Now after 3, we get this equation, this line. So we need to do a slope and a point slope thing for that. So I picked two points that are on it, found the slope, use the point slope form to get our equation of negative 2x plus 11. Where is that true? Everywhere that x is greater than or equal to 3. A lot of steps to go through for a problem like that, but you know it's part of the deal. You can do it, you just have to work through it. Don't be lazy, don't give up, you can do it. A second kind of special function is called a step function. And what you're looking at here is a graph where everything is made up of evenly spaced segments. And the most common type of step function is called the greatest integer function. The symbol for greatest integer is a bracket around the x. And what that function means is they want you to find the greatest integer that is less than or equal to whatever value is in the bracket. So if you had, uh, let's say for example, 3.2 the greatest integer less than 3.2 would be 3. Because remember, an integer is a whole number, positive or negative. If you had 5.8, the greatest integer less than 5.8 would be 5. If you already have an integer, you just stay with that integer. The easiest way to think about the greatest integer function is to round down. Whatever value you have, round it down to a whole number. Now we're going to do some graphing with these. Normally when we do a graph, we want to think in terms of an xy table, and we pick values for x, one value for each one, when you're dealing with the greatest integer, you don't want to do just individual values. You want to do a range of values. Because anywhere between 0 and 1, that number is going to round down to the same value. Anywhere from 1 to 2 rounds down to the same value. So your basic idea is going to be to use an entire interval, a section. So 0 to 1. 1 to 2, 2 to 3. So pick a number between 0 and 1. I'm going to pick 0 0.8. The greatest integer less than 0 0.8 will be 0. So everywhere from 0 to 1, I get the y value of 0. So I'm going to take this and put it on the graph between 0 and 1. Notice the 1 side is open, because if you plugged in 1, round down 1, you still get 1. 
So you leave the right side open. How about 1 to 2? Pick a value between 1 and 2. 1.3, let's say, round it down, you get 1. And that's true for anything from 1 to 2, so I'm going to put a section from 1 to 2 at y equals 1. And then from 2 to 3, anything you have would round down to 2. And my little bars are too long for, for that, but that's okay. And you can see now the step that goes on. This is why it's called a step function. It would continue going forever in both directions. We don't have to do all the cases. We just have to do enough to show it. Now notice the difference between our first function, integer of x, and our second function, integer of x plus 3. The only difference, since there's nothing multiplied here, the only difference is going to be in the y's. We're still going to go 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and so forth. Okay, 0 to 1, pick a number, say 0 0.2, plus 3 is 3.2, rounded down is 3. So my first bar from 0 to 1 goes at y equals 3. Pick a value between 1 and 2, and round down you'll get 4, and from 2 to 3, round down, you'll get 5. Again, I made my bars a little too big, but you get the idea. Now, where the fun begins is when we have a value that's not just x to work on. When it's 2x, you have to shrink the interval. So instead of going 0 to 1, you can only go 0 to a half. Because you double the value, you half the interval. If this were 3x, you would go to 1 third. If it were 4x, you would go to 1 fourth. So 0 to a half. Now the next one would have been 1 to 2, but you have those. So half of 1 is a half, half of 2 is 1. Now pick a number between 0 and a half. I'm going to pick 0 0.2 times 2 is 0 0.4, rounds down to 0. Between 1 half and 1, I'm going to pick 0 0.8 times 2 is 1.6, rounds down to 1. And between 1 and a half, you'll round down and you'll get 2. So from 0 to a half, I got 0. From a half to one, I got one. From one to one and a half, I got two. Okay, the same idea is going to work if we have a one third here, but it's going to make our intervals really wide. Instead of zero to one, you get zero to three. Instead of 1 to 2, you take those times 2, you get 3 to 6, 6 to 9. Pick a value between 0 and 3, I'm going to pick 1. A third of 1 is a third, rounds down to 0. The next group I'm going to pick 5. A third of 5 is 1 and 2 thirds, rounds down to make 1. The next one will round down to make 2. So we have from 0 to 3, this whole section at 0. From 3 to 6, that whole section is at 1. From 6 to 9, that whole section is at 2. And you get wider steps. The rest of the lesson for this will be continued on part B of this video as I'm almost at my 15 minute time limit. So we will uh, reconvene on part B and continue the lesson.